Hey golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. And today we have, once again, one of our favorite and one of your favorite guests back. It is Kevin Kraft, uh, master club fitter at our Columbia store, uh, but also professional golfer, very good professional golfer. And uh, that's going to be obviously a lot of the discussion today. So, um, Kevin, first of all, thank you for joining us. It's been you know a busy couple of weeks even since we last talked to you because uh, we well we have a big event we got to talk about. But first, just how are things going? How's the game? Uh, how are you feeling? Um, yeah, game seems to be pretty good. Um, I haven't played a ton since the uh, Senior Open qualifier. Um, I've been battling a little bit of a wrist issue. Um, got my first cortisone shot, so that was wow. kind of a fun new experience nice long needle um <laughs> but it seems to be working so that's good uh but we're going to be putting it through the test here over the next next uh about 10 12 days or so because a lot of golf coming up and uh i would like to be able to get through this without too much pain would be all right yeah because you're you're currently at we're recording this while you are um i guess you know later today you're going to be competing in the new hampshire open uh so there's a lot of golf that you're playing, and uh, obviously the game must be doing pretty well if you have qualified for the U.S. Senior Open. So for those who aren't quite caught up, uh, last time we talked to Kevin was after he had won the Pennsylvania Senior Open, which is in itself a pretty big accomplishment. Um, and then during that discussion, during that podcast episode, we had talked about you know, that next week was also Kevin's U.S. Senior Open qualifier, uh, which we have to go through that because – pretty dramatic scorecard that Skev, uh, that Kevin put together that day uh, to kind of come from behind seemingly and and, and put up the qualifying score. So uh, kind of give us the rundown there. All, I, all I'm going to say to start it is that you shot a five under 66, I believe. Um, but that kind of only tells a part of the story. So talk to me and, and kind of explain to the viewers and the listeners, um, you know, what went down that day. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you just look at it as, you know, as a, as a, just a score, um, it, was like oh and he played good so uh right <laughs> and, and i did i played well but um i was really on cruise control uh birdied the first hole which was you know always a good thing when you're doing qualifiers qualifiers are man it's such a it's such a crapshoot with with qualifiers because you got to get going and then you got to stay going and you can't make too many mistakes uh, mm -hmm. or if you do make, make mistakes you got to make like a ton of birdies and uh I kind of had, I don't necessarily like going into these things with, with a, a particular number in mind. Uh, I like, kind of like to let things just sort of flow naturally, but, um, I did do a little bit of thinking and was kind of like, all right, you know, if I can get to the turn at three, uh, under par, we'd had a bunch of rain. So the course was playing soft and we had basically no wind. So the course down at the homestead, phenomenal golf course. I mean, one of the one of the top rated courses in Virginia. Um, it's just a lovely place. I, I, I cannot express how much I love going down there. Um, even though there's no cell service, um, <laughs> which is crazy because you, you do something good and then you, you can't tell anybody for like an hour because right. <laughs> you, you're, you're on the road and you're like, yeah, I got no bars. Um, so yeah. Um, it was it was it was definitely going to be out there the place has played pretty difficult in the past first year i got in uh i got in at one under and i didn't have to play off and then the next year i got in i shot three under and had to do a four hole playoff to get in there um this time around he just had that sense that it was going to take it's going to take a number to to get through just because it really felt like it was out there of course was in perfect condition as it always is and uh so you know i I got to the turn at three and I was like, okay, this is great. Right. I'm cruising, feeling mm -hmm. good, hitting good shots and, uh, got to the 10th hole, which is really only scary in the tee shot. Uh, it derailed my attempt last year, uh, when I blew it right off the tee and had a lost ball and had to, you know, mm -hmm. I think I made double there. Um, which actually I did again this year. I made double, but it Ooh. wasn't because of the tee shot. Uh, I hit a really nice tee shot and I left myself a nice little 115 yard shot, which I just don't really have an answer for at the moment. Mm. Um, I'm working on it, working on those partial shots. Um, and I just, I didn't make a good committed golf swing. And uh, that was my only real major frustration of the, of the, the whole day was I made one swing that was completely uncommitted. Um, 
and this thing land flew over the left hand bunker and then rolled back Ooh. down into that lie that nobody wants it's the yeah. one where you're outside the bunker but so the ball is in the bunker the ball is basically still in the bunker it's all yeah. on sand uh i've got a couple little tufts of grass holding this thing up and um i didn't hit a terrible shot i i, I I got it on the green. I had to take it over the corner of the bunker and I got it on the green, but it was about 20 feet. I've been putting really good and I got a little aggressive and I rolled it about four, four and a half feet by him and did a total 360 horseshoe coming back at me. Ooh. So I was like, all right, well, that's not a good start to the back nine, but I'm still under par, you know? So we, yep. The back nine is pretty scorable. There's three par fives on the back nine now. Uh, they converted a par four to a par five, which is completely against the run of most things. Most places are right. going, taking fives and making it a four. So it doesn't really matter, honestly. Scores are going to be the same. It's relative, right? Par is a social construct is what I've been told. Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. So uh, go to the next tee, and it's playing 189 yards, and I hit the six iron that flew – 40 yard, 40 feet past the pin all the way to the back edge of the green and then proceeded to three foot that one. So, so we're back to even What's that we're, so we're back to even. Yeah, exactly. Right where I started uh, the day. And it's like, you have that sense of, uh, okay, well, I think I've just kind of thrown this away, you know, cause you, right. you know, the scores are out there, but old me probably would have been really angry and, uh, and and not dealt with this well uh knew me is much more sensible i suppose and willing to accept the the lot that i'm i'm being given and so the first bar five was the next hole i was like okay well let's just start to rebuild here and who knows i need to make a couple of eagles so be it so uh birdie 12 mm -hmm. missed about a 12 footer for birdie on 13 uh, rolled in a 30 footer from the fringe on 14 for birdie with a huge chunk of mud on my, on the right side of my ball. And I'm standing over this putt. Like I've been, I've been playing golf a long time, right? Way more than I've been playing golf way longer than you've been alive. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm standing there and I'm like, I'm looking at this putt and I'm looking at this ball and I was thinking, does mud on the right make the ball go left on putts? Actually, that's what you're told on the full swings, right? Is that the mud on one side will make the ball go the other way. And you have to play it because it's right. going to do it, right? If, if there's mud on the right, ball goes left. Mud on the left, ball goes right. But I hadn't, in all these years, I haven't figured out. Because you've been able to pick up your ball and clean it when it's on the green. Well, yeah, exactly. But I was on the fringe. So, right. um, so I hit this putt and I was like, uh, I don't know. We're just going to hit it and <laughs> play the line that I think it's going to go on and this thing fell in like last revolution. I was like, okay, well, there's, there's something I'm now two under, yeah. um, with, and, and the 14th hole is one of the toughest holes on the golf course. I mean, it's driver seven iron, so it's a pretty long hole. Um, I know I've got to survive 15, which is a, a long par three. It's about 215 yards. Um, hit that one to the fringe, almost made it. I mean, left it just on the edge. And then we go to 16 and 16 is a, a par five. It's you tee off and the whole fairway kind of runs diagonal. So you can kind of, it's one of those bite off what you think you can chew. So yeah. I was, I was feeling the wind. I was feeling my, my position, knowing that I've still got to, I've still got to keep pushing forward. And, uh, I kind of hung this one a little right. I mean, I went after this one, uh, maybe a little harder than I probably should have. And it, it, wasn't going to be in any issue with the with the bunkers they were going to, it was going to clear the bunkers um but there's a creek that meanders down the right hand side and it cuts in enough that ball could have been in could have been in you know bad mm -hmm. bad spot um so i'm walking up there walking up there walking up there and still walking still walking and i'm, I'm not seeing anything and finally i come up you know way further than i've been on this hole before and uh there's my ball sitting about two feet in you know uh to the to the good side of the hazard line with a really nice lie in the rough so the ball is sitting up pretty good there we go and so i'm like okay cool so i shoot this thing with a laser and it's 189 yards i'm like this is perfect i got i got i got a little bit of a jumper lie i've got the wind back into my face and i'm just gonna hit six iron and and try to attack this pin hit it eight feet it's great came out perfect um 
you know, there's, there's pond in front of the green. So, you know, there's, there's that little bit of worry, but as long as you catch it solid, that one should get over. Right. And so, um, hit it eight feet, had almost, a, almost a straight putt, maybe just inside, inside left edge, knock that one in. So now I'm at four and one of the guys that I played with had gotten on somehow managed to get a bar and able to find that there was a five and four already in. So he's like, mm. just so you know, this was, we we're, we we're standing on the tee box of the part of, of 16. He's like, just so you know, there's a five in and four in. So I knew where I stood. So I'm like, okay, so 17 is another par five. And it's a, it's kind of the reverse of the, the previous hole. It's a dog leg left. And I've never hit driver off this, this tee. I've always hit a three wood off this tee, played it maybe a little bit more conservatively. And I stood up there and I was just like, you know, he, this is one of those times where you just have to, you have to pull the club, you have to make yeah. a swing, and it's either going to work out or it's not going to work out. So made a great swing, left myself uh, two ten for a second shot, and the wind had switched. So now this one was downwind, and I'm standing over it with five iron and going, "You're not going to commit to this. It's just not. You're just not going to do it. You, you, you're going <laughs> to worry that you're going to hit it too far." So I dropped back to six iron and pulled it just a little tiny bit lands on the front left corner of the green and bounces into the bunker left and that's okay yeah. i mean it's not bad uh it's a little bit of a longer bunker shot but the whole green kind of slopes away so i've been good with bunkers hit a good bunker shot had about six feet dead straight putt i've been rolling it great and i just straight up came out of it uh, it's mm. the only bad putt i hit all day and just tugged it a little bit left so I was like, ah, okay, well, maybe I can get in at four, and maybe four will be a playoff, and we'll yeah, see what right. happens. Uh, 18's a, a hundred and about 190, I guess about 100, what was it playing, 186, I guess, par three. So it's weird okay. to end on a par three. Not too many courses that we play end on par threes. Uh, pin tucked all the way over on the right-hand side, which, I mean, you've seen it. I draw for the you, ball. Yeah, you got that draw, so probably not perfect for you. Not exactly my favorite pin location, but um, and there's bunker over on the right-hand side. And it was just another one of those, all right, we're going we're gonna to drop down a club. We're going to hit it hard and we're going to hope for the best and I hit a laser seven iron to four feet. <laughs> wow. Just above the under hole. the gun. Yeah. Just above the hole. So I made it a little more challenging, right? It's a, uh, it's a, it's a little tiny, it's like right edge putt. Um, don't have to hit it very hard cause it's going to feed in. So <laughs> the funny part was as I'm, as I'm walking around uh, surveying this putt, I've got this, horse fly that is circling my head like i'm like it's a ring and i'm <laughs> jupiter right and it's driving me crazy i've got the hat off i'm trying to beat this stupid thing away and finally shake it off probably dumped it off on one of my playing partners mm -hmm. and uh so i get set up I'm, I'm over the ball and another this is a smaller fly definitely not the same fly starts buzzing around and i gotta back off okay all right, so get reset, re, you know, <laughs> set up over it again, and a sweat bee lands on my ball, <laughs> and I'm like, seriously, bugs? I'm just, I've got this. This is not like, this is a, it's, a, it's a kind of important putt because if I get to five, I feel like I've got a pretty decent chance, and so finally, all the bugs leave me alone and hit a good solid putt, poured it right in the middle, and uh, and post five under. So uh, it was quite the turnaround. Wow. Actually, it was it was two two big turnarounds. Uh, I did a U turn and then a and then another U turn uh, to, to get to where I wanted to be. Wow, that is that is a truly psychotic back nine score. I mean, or, or score card, I guess the back score that the, the score itself is 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 not anything like crazy, but just double bogey bogey to start and then come out of there shooting still was it two under then on the back. So that's uh that's. Yeah, plus you had a you know I missed what six footer there on uh, seventeen, um, so clearly things could have been a little bit better. You said you had left another putt right on the edge, so this could have been a pretty low, very low score. I, I have to say, I think it may have been one of the the very best ball striking rounds I've had in my entire career. It does sound like that, yeah. And I didn't see it. I really didn't see it coming. I was hitting the ball okay, but I didn't have any indication that oh I was going to go down there and just going to gonna stripe it but i give a lot of credit to the facility itself 
uh, and the way I feel about it. Because when when you have such a good feeling about someplace and you're just so happy to be there. I mean, the practice round, uh, I went out, I got there about three o'clock and uh, played the front nine. It was great. I was, I got in. I didn't even I didn't even book a tea time. I just went in the shop and and uh, uh, Dylan, the kid that in the, in the shop, uh, I've known now for a few years, and and we had a little conversation. He's like, "Yeah, just just go. You don't have to play with anybody. You can just grab a cart and go." So, uh, get my cart and and head out the first uh, play the first hole. And uh, <laughs> so this is gonna be a little insight into into me. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I get done with the first hole, and. I look over and there's the halfway house because the ninth hole doesn't come all the way back to the clubhouse. So there's the halfway house. And I was like, how long is that halfway house going to be open? It's three o'clock now. It's probably going to take <laughs> me maybe two hours because it's probably going to be slow. So I was like, yeah, I don't think they're going to be open. So I ran over, grab a couple of beers, throw them in the cart course yep go play go play practice round right so get through the first uh first nine and the heavy mist starts and i don't i mean i don't play in the rain <laughs> oh come on that's not too bad mist mist is fine hold on hold on yeah so um <laughs> so i play 10 and 11 and it turns into a drizzle and i play 12 and it turns into a rain and I play 13 and it turns into a downpour. And <laughs> and I'm just like, this is awesome. There's nobody out there at this point. And I'm just like, I am soaked. I didn't bring my I didn't bring my rain gear with me. There is yeah, why wouldn't I had it. It was just I didn't bring it. <laughs> and uh and I'm like, this is great. I'm just I'm gonna finish this round. And I'm I'm pouring in putts from everywhere, too. I'm like four under, and I don't want to be four under. Like, I don't right. like playing well in practice rounds. I want to shoot 75 in practice rounds. I want to <laughs> see the golf course, get a feel for it. The last thing I want is expectation. I don't want to be like, oh, well, I did this yesterday, right? So uh, I end up shooting three under, and I get done, and I am just flat drenched. I mean, there is not a part of me that is not completely soaked. So I get in the car. I had to put a towel down on the seat because – you know, and uh, go off to find some find some dinner and uh, and got wow. some dinner. Went back to the hotel and you know it's funny. It's really funny when you're soaking wet. the The thing that you want the most is to get out of the clothes you're in and get into a hot shower. It's like if yes. you are drenched, you want to then get drenched with warmth. Right. And it's just weird. Like I'm totally wet, but I really want to get more wet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but it is, right? I mean <laughs> That's a yeah, that's a good point. I never thought of it that way, but um uh, I hadn't either until I realized this when I got back. So this was was it so it was like a cold rain then, right? It wasn't like uh I know, mean it was, wasn't it wasn't hot rain. It wasn't like Okay. I guess hot rain. I don't know if hot rain exists necessarily around here, but um okay. Well, that's fascinating. Yeah, I, I guess uh, there's a, a look into the practice round that got Kevin Kraft to the U.S. Senior Open. Um, wow. Okay. So, yeah, all in all, you shoot two two players shot a fit, uh, 66 that day, uh, you and one other. And uh, obviously at that point, yeah, and you and Ted didn't need to do a playoff because it was both – it was the two qualifiers. So, um, but that's, that's awesome. So, now this is going to be Kevin's third appearance in the U.S. Senior Open. Obviously, as you mentioned, uh, 2021 and 2022 – um, he, he qualified both of those years. Um, now, so I, w I kind of wanted to talk about this past U.S. Open, but you know what? We're already on the U.S. Senior Open. We're doing this. Let's talk about the U.S. Senior Open and what you know about the course there. So Newport Country Club um, up in Rhode Island. Have you played it before, and what do you know? What are you expecting uh, from the U.S. Senior Open this year? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know a lot about this place uh, other than what I've been able to glean from the, from, you know, internet and flyovers and that kind of stuff. Um, one of the guys that used to work in our Columbia store, Jim Donatelli, his brother lives on the golf course. So oh. according to Jim's brother, the USGA hasn't done much. Um, they haven't had them grow up the rough. He said the rough's okay. actually kind of down. Um, apparently they've widened a couple of fairways bizarre that they're 
widening fairways. Interesting. I usually expect them to. Does the course play really tough as it is, or what? Apparently, I'm, so yeah. the it's it's right on the bay or right on the ocean, and okay. so the wind is apparently a significant factor. Um, I'm expecting really fast greens and a lot of wind, mm -hmm. and if that's the case, and and there's a little bit more, you know. Um, you got a little more wiggle room off the tee and, and rough. That's not, you know, knee high. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what that's going to be like. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds like major championship golf, uh, is what you're describing. You know, you mean, especially a course that's kind of on the coast there with the ocean right there. Um, it sounds like, you know, setting itself up for major championship golf, even if it is making the course quote unquote, I don't want to say easier, but they're they're clearly not like trying to you know destroy golfers out there and trying to still allow. They're letting it be, be a natural, you know, a natural yeah. test, and I yeah. I I like that because the last two have not been natural tests. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the rough's been so nasty. Right, and I dealt with it well in twenty one when I was hitting it good, and I did not deal with it well in twenty two when I was not hitting it good. So, um, you know, I'm up here just to get a little bit of a you know just a little more prep right yeah sure i've played 18 rounds of golf this year that's it which is that is that is insane to think about because we've got he's he's qualified for a senior major um won the pennsylvania senior open and you've played you know 18 total rounds for the year that uh that doesn't really compute with me as someone who's playing kind i mean i try like i try to play twice a week um and that yeah but kudos to you clearly you can kind of just flip that switch on i don't know how it happens i really i really don't i mean i i think about this quite a bit it's like how how have i been able to do these things given that you know wednesdays are my typical golf day i i reserve you know my weekend day off for my wife so that we have mm -hmm. you know we have time together and um yeah i don't know i don't know it's a well, it's a it's a strange thing i just hope it continues cuz it's been this stuff's been so cool, man. It's been so much fun um, getting to do these things and and compete. It, it's it's awesome. I love it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun to follow. I do remember the was it so I think was it 22 or 21 when you started and had a really good first round, I believe, out there. Um, this is 21. I think that was in Omaha, right? Uh, the Omaha Country Club. And uh, I know we had several second swing, uh, you know, team members out there following you and we're sending videos and i uh i'll never forget forget the uh reactions of dan marshall uh the gm of the store out in columbia he'd send the videos and you know you'd make a putt and he'd be like yeah yeah you know in the, in the video so uh that it's it's awesome yeah uh so i mean obviously there'll be uh and it was it was fun to follow because at the after that first day you were what like t12 or something you were you were you know you were up there on the leaderboard and for a while there too, I know he had sent a pic of you know they had like the actual USGA leaderboard on the course, and there was K Craft up there. Um, so uh, that was a lot of fun, and obviously we're rooting for that uh, once again this year. And uh, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. We'll be of course shot by shot tracker whatever is available on the website. We'll be we'll be looking at there for sure. So um, now I we got to go into this too, and I it you know it. I, and we're gonna make it, it's the thing that we do every single time we talk. You already know what I'm getting at. Um, the bag behind you, you got the clubs. Um, this was only like three weeks ago we talked about your clubs. Uh, I did anything change since then? And if not, um, we can still run through them anyway because we get comments on our channel all the time. Hey, what's Kevin's? What's in the bag? What is it? Even though we have it in our content every time, uh, they I don't know if people are lazy and they don't want to go through it again, but let's go through the clubs uh, another time here. Yeah, um, nothing's changed. Um, okay. I did. I did bring a couple extras with me this this trip. Um, I have a uh, Strixon ZX2 driving iron that Ooh, I picked okay. up at the 22 Senior Open. Um, this course here has some some pretty short holes. Um, actually so short that i'm not sure i can even use the two iron so um wow. since i didn't since i didn't play it i just drove it around and you know, drove around it yesterday um i'll get a better sense today of what i'm actually gonna need so it, it could change a little bit tomorrow but um you know for those those holes where i just need something to you know like the low bullet just to chase down the fairway mm -hmm. 
um i've got that one i, I try to keep that one in my trunk so that it's uh it's something i can go to if i need it and then sure. i've got my i got my three wood in the uh in the trunk too so it will come out if the par fives are a little longer than what my two hybrid can handle for approach shot so okay. we'll see um but other than that there's been no changes in the in the bag itself it's uh it's my my dark speed uh driver uh eight degrees with the uh, auto flex shaft um the two and four hybrid are uh cobra king tech i have the burner mini driver uh as my as my backup plan for tee shots um king uh forge tech uh five iron and then six and seven are the King Forge CB. Eight through Gap Wedge is the King MB. And I got a pair of Taylor Made Mill Grind four uh, wedges now sitting at 55 and 60 degrees. So if anything's changed, it's just the loss. I've been trying to dial in the shorter gotcha. stuff. You, you did mention earlier in the, in the, we were talking too about like that 115 yard shot at the time, like, you know, you were playing the qualifier. You didn't have a, an answer for that, I think is what you said. So maybe kind of just dial some of that in. Yeah, so the problem's been that I need 15 clubs, and the USGA is never going to let me have it. <laughs> right, right, right. We all know that. Um, for a while there, I didn't have a hundred yard club, and then I didn't have a hundred and five yard club, and then I didn't. Now I don't have a hundred and ten to hundred and twenty yard club. Mm. Well, hundred and I suppose really legitimately right now where i'm a little stuck is probably 106 to about 115. okay um it's it's partial shots and that's for me that's i'm a guy that likes to swing hard at it i like to to make a good full committed you know go at it and yeah the partial shots are tough i'm better with wedges i'm not going to stand there most of the time and hit a partial seven iron that's just not who i've ever been so i'm not terribly good at that something i'm i'm starting to work on now um but I've got it to where I've got now an 85 yard stock, good solid lob wedge, 105 yard stock, good sand wedge. And then this, the, the gap wedge, I haven't played with it yet. I've bent it back another degree. I'm at 49 instead of 48, which should, should, fingers crossed, give me about a 122 coverage. Um, which means I wouldn't have to back off of it too, too much to hit it 115 right. yards. Um, just trying to get these numbers dialed in. It's it's tough. And it's tough on, honestly, it's tough indoors because as as phenomenal a, a machine as TrackMan is, I, I struggle with the wedge aspect of things because I, I see such different numbers on the golf course. You give me pitching wedge on up and I will... I will live and die by the numbers that I get on track, man. But I have a hard time with the, with the partial shots and and stuff with with track yeah. man when it comes to wedges. And so you know, it is what it is. Yeah, interesting. I I've, I I have a theory on some of the differences there on that, and I don't we don't need to get too far into it. But I feel like uh, players in general will, and you already kind of have a shallow attack angle as it is, so maybe the irons aren't obviously the difference there, but. I have a theory that players indoors on a, you know, on a mat or on turf will swing shallower than out on the golf course. And so maybe that's showing up a little bit with, with the wedges, but again, that's, that's just a theory on, on my end, but I mean, that's, that's distinctly possible. Cause I mean, I used to be way back when I used to be much more aggressive coming into the ball than I am now. And then I developed tendonitis at a, at a young age. Uh, and so I've, become very much a sweeper and so so that i can practice off mats you know you grow up mm-hmm. in the north you're probably going to be hitting off mats most of the time so uh that sweeping motion <laughs> keeps keeps yeah. me for the most part uh, in pretty good shape this one was uh this one was a little bit of a shocker when it started to to really be a be an issue but i think yeah. you got it taken care of yeah i mean only a theory but yeah that's obviously it's good that that stuff's taken care of and you're all set and good for competing in another major so that's a that's a lot of fun um and then uh actually you know what we should go through the putter one more time here because i think we left that out and uh you know that's been the one that's changed the most i know you said it hasn't changed from the last time we talked but uh what's the what's the putter setup it is the odyssey tri hot 5k number seven ch okay. with the little plumber's neck 
Ooh, plumber's neck. Okay. All right, yeah. I know you've been tinkering with a lot of different ones there. I'm in a completely different world right now mentally with putters than I've been in a long time. Like, my self-talk, my mental self-talk with putter is super good, super positive. I feel like I'm going to make everything. Um, I can't remember the last time I really felt like that. It's, it's It's been really cool. Wow. Yeah, that's... That must be a different zone. I, I've certainly never been in that uh, realm in my life uh, where I feel that confident with the putter. So, really? Um, no. Come no, on, Drew. I, you, certainly you not. You had to have gone through some periods where you're like, I will say, making everything. I will say this. Um, since we're kind of, I don't know. I don't want it. This, this is obviously about you, and this is a tangent. But um, I did play last week uh, my best round score-wise since I was a teenager. Um, and a large part of that was I made a bunch of putts. Um, I think I calculated... The total, um, this is a rough estimate based on the Arcos app, but um, 128 feet of putts were made in that round. So, um, yeah, so that was a lot. So that that helped. Obviously, that's a big part of it. A shot of 66, uh, five under par. So um, that was, uh, yeah, best round I've played. I shot a 65 when I was 16 and uh, haven't been really close to that since. So, you know, progress. But to your point, that's the closest I've been to, like, that's the closest I've been to like on the course thinking like, okay, I, this is a 15 footer downhill left to right. I could, I'm going to knock this in, you know, and I've, that was the closest I think I felt to, to what you're describing uh, really in my life. So um, yeah, it's that at least for me was very fun. So I can't imagine but you're probably another step ahead and you just step up to a putt. It's like, I got this. Yeah. It's, it's a good feeling. Um, I feel, I've really felt like, you know, I had a, I had a run from, end of 2002 to 2004 where I, I basically made every putt I looked at it was insane and I've, I've felt since then like I've maybe used up my quota um <laughs> which is yeah. you know one of the reasons why I go through putters all the time is because yeah this one's not working this one's not working <laughs> you've made all the putts you can make with this putter and now it's time to try the next one yeah something like that <laughs> I mean I I put all the blame for bad shots on myself except for putting i'm gonna blame i'm just gonna blame putters mm. yeah true that's an easy way to go about it right it's not you at your clubs as we like to say so yeah i've heard that before wait where, where have <laughs> i heard that before um yeah i mean kevin we're 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 super excited uh u.s senior open it's the it's june 27th through the 30th newport country club in rhode island um we're going to be following every step of the way, obviously here at Second Swing, and I'm sure the viewers and listeners will too. So, um, we'll let you we'll let you get back to preparation. I know you're, as we mentioned before, we're recording this while Kevin um, is actually on site for the New Hampshire Open. Uh, so another event he's playing in. Obviously, he talked about getting prepped for the big major. Uh, so we'll be following that as well. Uh, obviously, this will be posted after the fact. So, you know, maybe we got another trophy by the time this thing goes live. I don't know. I'm not going to say it's not possible. Uh, this is another one where I'm where I'm playing against the kids, right? I'm probably the <laughs> oldest guy in this field, legitimately. Um, does that give you like a I don't know? Um, does it give you sort of a, an edge or like a you know a little extra motivation to be like, well, all these kids are you know hitting it at three thirty sometimes. There there might be I don't know. I'm trying not to age you too much, but they might be you know several years younger than me. Uh, does that do, do you have some extra motivation because of that? Absolutely. Um, yeah. I'm going to take a lot of inspiration from Dick Mast. Did you see what Dick yes, did this week? Yes, I have seen what he's been doing. That's 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 insane. Is he 73 or 75 or something like that? And he's shooting. He went to the same qualifier I went to. Well, he didn't. I don't think he had to do the. I don't think he had to do the the pre qualifier. Yeah. Um, but he got in. I mean, how awesome is that? I mean, yeah. he's he's in in a way he's kind of like a Bernard Longer. Uh, you'd have to be, mm-hmm. be 73 years old and be able to do what he's doing. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's, I've known Dick for years and he's a great guy. And, you know, I see him a couple times a year, usually in, in qualifiers and stuff. And it's, it's, he's an absolute, like he's a legend mm-hmm. and, and he's, you know, he's somebody that you can, you can definitely look to and be like, all right, that's freaking cool, man. Mm-hmm. Like, it's yeah. awesome. So, um, yeah, playing against the young guys, you know, they they look at me, I'm sure, and like, you know, who's this <laughs> clown? You know, uh, he's got he's got the got the white goatee, and he's got the the 
dad bod plus and uh <laughs> dad bod plus they're all they're all you know they're all flat bellies and they're they've got their workout routines and um you know i drive too much to have a workout routine at this point so um yeah it's it's fun and i'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people well i'm hoping there'll be a lot of people that are gonna be like what just happened after this week right, right? even if i don't yeah. win uh, but if I play, you know, if I play well and, and, and finish, you know, in a, in a decent position, um, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, they're, <laughs> they're, they're I just want them to look at me like, wait, <laughs> why, that guy beat me? <laughs> why did this happen? You know, yeah. <laughs> it, it probably would be certain in some respect, a humbling experience for, I'm sure there's, you know, D one players that are, you know, they're in the prime of their, I guess, athletic uh, you know, physique, right? Where they're, you know, they're going to be able to hit the ball as far as they can. Um, or maybe there are even pro players that are there that are going to be, you know, trying to make it, you know, in terms of like at the highest level, right? They're playing New Hampshire Open. They might be trying to go through all the qualifying and make it to the PGA Tour someday. Um, and it would just be, it'd be great if the champion of all of that was not, again, I'm not trying, this isn't trying to be like a, like a condescending thing to you, but it would be, it would be great. So anyway, we, we wish you the best of luck, both New Hampshire Open as you're recording this. And also, of course, um, this will go live here just before the start of the U.S. Senior Open. So um, we'll be cheering you on for that. Um, anybody listening or watching, leave a comment. Uh, wish Kevin the best of luck at the Newport Country Club. Uh, we'll be following on. Kevin, thank you. And uh, once again, good luck. And uh, we'll be rooting for you here at Second Swing. Thanks, Drew. It's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and hope to do you all proud.